Okay, today I want to talk about uh, a very simple topic about uh, panel speakers, which is very much interested in, uh, in these days, and its new control method for this hi-fi sound radiation. Well, let me just tell you about the general design trend of the machines and devices first. Well, as you, everybody knows that, well, the design of the machine is now changing to, to be more slim and light, high performing, artistic, simple, and cheap. If I work with uh, some high notch companies in, in electronic, electric companies in Korea, as like uh, Samsung, then they are struggling to reduce the thickness by 0.5 millimeter. And uh, they spend a lot of money to reduce the, the thickness of the mobile phone. Well, that's very important for their design. So almost all the spaces inside of the machine or device is packed with uh, uh, some electrical, electronic components. And uh, while well, there is no, actually no space to add some more, but they are finding some space again and again. Okay. So they are spending lots of money to miniaturize the machines. In the viewpoint of speaker, then the, well, initially it started from the uh, moving dynamic system with the horn, but now it's changed to the cone system, which is usually can be seen in the market. And then now the, some high-end speakers are changed to the panel type, and also its array configuration is, becomes very important. Well, in addition to that, well, not just a, a predetermined shape, but any plate system, which is used for the cover of the machine or wall of the, of the structure, or, or even your desk can be converted into an arbitrary virtual speaker with some control. Well, in parallel to that, we also have uh, seen the performance evolution of the performance. But uh, the most important thing in these days is the directionality of the speaker system. In the former days, for example, for usual, usual moving core speakers, at low frequencies, they radiate the sound in all directions. And at high frequencies, they become very directional. That's our common sense. Then, now it is changing and uh, we're we need to radiate the sound in a wide band frequency with everything because every frequency should be omnidirectional radiation. Or even for the low frequency range, it should be super directive for, for one direction that they are designing to. So we are actually searching for or exploring uh, some extreme cases of the sound radiation for the control. Well, let's uh, just quickly review the conventional speakers how, and how it was developed. Well, it started from, everything started from the, the Abraham Graham Bell and uh, in 1867, 76. Well, he just mentioned his speaker system as a telephony system and uh, what well, it is uh, actually used for telephone. And uh, the speaker at the time is called the receiver. So in these days, the, in the mobile phone companies call their small speakers as a receiver with a such kind of tradition. And he's just mentioned that while well, he invented the system for the loud speaking device. So loud speaker terminology stems from there. Then, well, for the early part of the dynamic speaker, well, the idea and the patent of dynamic transducer was invented by Siemens in Germany, and he just uh, filed that in the patent in 1874. And also, the a person in Great Britain also patented the moving core, but it's slightly different from the nowadays moving core speaker system. And uh, in 1915, the in Denmark, they the Jensen and the Pridam just developed the 
speaker system with horns to amplify the sound produced by a small diaphragm. But strangely, the patent was denied by the US patent office. Anyway, they found the company and the company name is Magna Vox. Magna means the great and Vox means the sound. So great sound. Magna Vox company was founded by them and they sold many machines. And now it is a, a subsidiary of Philips company of Netherlands now. Okay, then the direct radiator moving coil cone speaker emerged by Kellogg and Rice at the General Electric in 1925. And uh, actually, this is the, the patent and, and the invention that is the actual origin of the current day moving coil speakers. They have implemented it to the RCA Radiola loudspeaker number 104 in 1926. And uh, at the time, its price was about $250. And uh, if you convert it in the today's price, it is about $3,000. So it was very, very expensive at the time. Well, the, the moving coil moves back and forth edge like this, as this dog's mouse is fluffing. And uh, well, this is the, we call it as a dipole type sound radiation. Well, next one is the, the highly directional speaker system using the moving core loudspeaker. Well, you can see that there is a, a, a dome which has a parabolic shape and the inside of it, there is a, a moving core loudspeaker. Well, it is a patent by Brown and uh, well, the, they have placed the loudspeaker at the focal point of this parabolic reflector and then sound will be radiated by the reflection that it will be radiated to the some beam, well, theoretically, but not actually. So they have enhanced the directivity very nicely. And uh, well, compared to the loudspeaker, direct loudspeaker, it is enhanced, it has a, a enhanced uh, directivity at even low frequencies. They have used this as an array, and by controlling the phase of the speakers, they could steer the sound beam, and it is some kind of origin of the beam forming processes. Well, in well, in the today's price, the sound tube system they produce is about $680 as an array system. Well, it is called a dome loudspeaker, but sometimes dome speaker has a different meaning where well, it is used for Twitter, where well, it is quite popular in the uh, speaker cabinet system, which is used for the uh, Twitter system. And uh, it has a, a horn shape in here. And uh, you can see that the horns inside in the center, there is a membrane and the oscillating membrane. So horn is amplifying the sound and also the wider dispersion of the sound is made by this horn. And this is also called the dome speaker, but I'm not talking about this. In the viewpoint of high frequency range, where wide angle or omnidirectional sound radiation is another invention, where it is opposing to this dome speaker. Another thing we have to mention is the balanced mode radiator BMR for making the omnidirectionality and uh, it was invented in a, a technical tectonic audio labs in UK. And uh, they are actually exciting the moving coil, not in the center, but at the nodal plane of the membrane. So they are avoiding the first resonance of the membrane itself. So their frequency range becomes very, very wide. And also the, the sound radiation is uh, uh, radiated in a very wide range. Now let's talk about uh, a flat speaker. Uh, well, you can see that some very expensive flat speakers. Uh, well, the first one we have to mention is electrostatic loudspeaker, which was invented in 1953. 
by Yan Zhen in the at the U.S. Navy. Well, you can see that in the many invention was made were made and from the military sector, and they actually developed some some sonar system. And uh, during the invention of the sonar system, they also as a additional product, they have made these loudspeaker systems. Well, they are utilizing the high voltage electric field between by two metallic grids inside of this plate, and uh, they are statically charged with membrane, including that, and uh, the metallic grids are actually driving this such kind of, of charged membrane in between them, and uh, they are moving with the in a in a in phase. So the excitation amplitude is small. So very large size is needed to avoid the low frequency deficiency. However, because they don't have any resonances, they have a very flat frequency response function with a very small distortion. Well, very small distortion means actually its amplitude is very small. Its manufacturing cost is quite high and it needs a high voltage for making some adequate sound levels. Well, still it is sold as a quote ESL system, which is uh, manufactured by quote electroacoustics in UK. And uh, currently its price is about $850 in the eBay. It's not produced anymore, but at the time, well, it was very high, about 3,000 US dollar. Well, at the moment, the high-end speakers are actually using the ribbon loudspeaker as like this. It is a, a photo of Apogee grant and the Apogee speaker is very, very high in price. For example, in US, one model, where it's called the Apogee grant, is about 14,000 US dollar in the, this price. So it is very high-end speaker and uh, the sound itself is very, very attractive. Actually. They're actually using the ribbon in here when it, it crippled the ribbon. And uh, by using the electromagnetism to cause the ribbon to vibrate, then the ribbon is responding very quickly to, to the uh, variation of the magnetic force. So it has a very good high frequency responses. If you, if you see some, some speaker system, in the cabinet, then you can find uh, some array of speakers from Twitter, mid-range, and Whoop or something like that. And uh, some speakers introduce the ribbon type tweeters, or some, some use the, the domed speaker. So in the high-end speaker nowadays, domed Twitter or ribbon Twitter are very popular. And they need uh, actually the, the transformer to use the, the system. Now you can see, uh, well, do you, can you see the title? Professor Sonako, can you see the title? I cannot see the title. You can see it, Prof. You can see it, yeah. Yes. But I cannot see that with uh, some, it is masked. Uh, I feel that. Yes, I can see the title. Oh, okay, now I, I, I just uh, erased that floating control system. Okay, so and I now want to overview the cheaper entry level flat loudspeakers. Well, probably you know the, the system like this, and it is a standard type of flat panel speaker. Well, it is actually developed of the DERA, a defense laboratory, <laughs> again, from UK. And uh, they have uh, filed a patent as a panel form loudspeaker in US. Well, it is, uh, uh, the technology is offered for the foundation of the next NXT technology company in UK. And they are calling this as a distributed mode loudspeakers or DML. And the uh, first commercialized model was, uh, was not cheaper, and uh, it was about $100. Uh, 
and the, but it becomes uh, cheaper and cheaper and uh, nowadays it's very cheap. However, they are exciting the system with the uh, uh, moving coil loudspeaker or piezo type loudspeaker systems, but the piezo system excitation has a, a very small output, so it is not popular, but they have used the moving coil for the exciter. And uh, because they have excited one point of the panel, where they have uh, vibrated with the multimodal type, and also the resultant sound was a multimodal type, which means that, well, in the spectrum, there are many peaks and troughs in the spectrum, so the sound quality was not good. However, its advantage is that it is lightweight, inexpensive, and the aesthetical design possible, and uh, you can select various materials for the, the panels. Well, the disadvantage, as I mentioned, it, is, uh, it makes some sound distortion due to multimodal resonances, but uh, they need also some stiffness of the panel. Nowadays, the piezoelectric speaker is quite popular in many small electrical devices, and uh, it was patented by Tectonic Audio Labs again, and uh, their motion is uh, in the low frequency range, they have a, a rigid piston motion. In the high frequency range, they have a, a multimodal vibration edge like a panel speaker. Unfortunately, its frequency range is quite high. So they are limited to the high frequency range in between one kilohertz to 20 kilohertz. But still, it can, we can hear some sound and especially for the speech communication, that's well, we, we, are, we are actually losing the, the hue, but uh, we can communicate with this speaker quite easily. Well, it's very cheap for an element. It's uh, less than one quarter US dollar. Well, there is uh, another type called the film panel loudspeakers. And you can see that it is something looks like a, a mirror, whole body mirror in your home. Well, it is uh, called the planar magnetic speaker and uh, it is invented in 3M company. And uh, they, have, uh, they have used the, this uh, planar magnetic speaker for the name of the magnet power. Well, well there is a, a conductive film inside of the system where well, as a mylar film or polyimide and the uh, moving mass is driven over the entire area with the in-phase and it does not need any high stiffness. And uh, while it is quite popular for, for, the, for the woofer system, especially, especially for very low frequency sound and the uh, magnet pan woofer is very, very popular, very well popular, but in the price is not popular at all. You can see that Magnetpan Maggie Bass panel is very pop, very, very famous. And it is about 800 US dollar for one unit. So it's not cheap mm -hmm. at all. Nowadays, you can find many PGT speakers using composite membrane, polymer membrane. And actually it was invented by DuPont company and uh, they have produced the Kina 500 by a company called the Penwalt Chemical Company. They have purchased the patent from DuPont and they have produced it. And now their companies are also uh, sold to other company, I forgot the name. And they were using the piezo effect of the PIM <coughs> or polyvinylidin fluoride found by Kawai in 1969. So PVDF film is very popular and you can form any shape with this film. So you can be used for the balloon and the, the balloon can speak something. And you can use that in the, in the football ball and uh, you can find the, you can, the football ball can say something to the football player and if you like. It has a very smooth, frequency response function, because if you attach this PVDF film to the a solid panel, then it will introduce some additional damping effect. So the panel resonance can be reduced a little bit. 
it's very light and slim and conformal. So due to the, its flexibility, so it is quite useful for forming very irregular shape. However, because its amplitude is very small, it is a kind of PGT. So its amplitude is very small. So in order to radiate a large power, the area should be very large. Now, finally, we will talk about uh, parametric loudspeaker array, PLA, PLA, which is composed of very small ultrasonic elements as like this. And uh, where ultrasonic waves are radiated and uh, they, will, they will be reduced very quickly with the distance. However, within the uh, distance, they are actually interacting in a nonlinear sense. So they are generating some harmonics and the harmonic generated will be propagated without reduction and we can share the sound. It has a, a very good advantage in super high directivity and a very flat, compact flat volume. You can find in a, another as known, known as a hypersonic speaker or super directional beam speaker, audio spotlight system as like this and the phased array speaker, focused audio system, everything uh, meaning the same thing, this parametric loudspeaker array. Well, if you see some type of, of this, of, for example, this holosonics speaker system, it is 2,000 US dollar in this year. So it's not cheap, but uh, it is, if we, you use that for the public address system, for the exhibition or some other occasions, then it is not expensive at all. Well, another thing for the directive panel speaker is using the DML speaker, distributed mode radiate loudspeaker system in a line array as like this. So they are in line array as like this, and they are radiating sound with uh, some phase calibration. And then they can radiate sound in a, in a one direction or they can be made to have an omnidirectional radiation. Such kind of, of, of directivity can be seen in the sound field rendering for the three dimensional sound field as like this. You can see the a number of loudspeakers surrounding a person sitting in this chair. And you can see that many speakers are surrounding and by controlling the sound radiation, then you can hear the three-dimensional sound. Well, the other type is the using the this such kind of tall boy type loudspeaker array. Well, if you just use that in the sideway, you can call it as a sound bar system. And it can be used for the passive beamforming or active beamforming systems. Well, in the in the auditorium, you can find the loudspeakers uh, arranged as like this. And it is actually assembly of such a loudspeaker system to make a, a, a directional sound or omnidirectional sound. Well, the other type of the line array of loudspeaker is just using the speaker in line as like this. Well, we call it as the end fire line array of the loudspeakers. And also it can make a, a, a very sharp beam as like this, which can be used for directional sources. Or if you use the loudspeaker array in the broad side and also in the longitudinal side and a compact form is used, then you can make a, another array for the beam forming. So you can see that the beam is radiating the sound as like this. And uh, while well, this is the 100 meter distance and you can find that it is still maintaining about uh, one more than 100 decibel. And uh, you can see the beam is formed until it is it reach about 40 to 50 meter from the radiator. So such kind of array system is also possible for the directional loudspeaker system. Okay. Now, Let's think about uh, uh, one motivations for further development and uh, introducing the active control of the panel speakers. Let's first think about uh, a major advantage in using the conventional 
distributed mode loudspeaker system. Sound is usually radiated by the excitation in the center with a single exciter system with a flat panel. Well, it is very simple and very neat in, in aesthetical and uh, well, configuration. Well, it is a smaller distortion compared to the cone speakers and uh, it is lightweight. And it can be applicable to any panel structure systems. So it is quite versatile and very compact. If you use the distributed mode loudspeaker system employing the piezo film over a very wide area, then you can have a, a extra damping effect on the panel resonances and the conformal layer possibility. Well, nowadays you can find a very high end and uh, very high definition TV system in the market. But sometimes it is uh, using the word with the OLED, speak, OLED TV system. And also sometimes it is with a uh, 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 quantum dot system, something like that. So it is a 4K system resolutions. And then they, are, they have, a, in the, especially for the OLED system, OLED system, they have a incorporating the distributed mode loudspeaker, or sometimes they use the piezo film inside of the panel, which is attached to the, uh, the TV panel. Formerly in the usual LCD TV, it was impossible because if the panel is, is vibrating, then the, the, the vision will be blurred. However, the OLED system works differently and they are uh, activated in a pointwise sense. So even though one point is excited with the vibration, then they do not deteriorate the image of the source. So they are using such kind of, of, of distributed mode DML or DML using the piezo film over a wide area. Well, sometimes you can find uh, some commercial which employs the magnetostrictive actuator edge like this. If you attach this to the, for example, uh, a shop window in the glass window, then you can generate a sound from this by the excitation of this magnetostrictive actuator and you, everybody in the street can hear the sound with a very loud voice. So this is quite also useful. Okay, then let's talk about the major disadvantage of the DML speakers. Well, formerly multimodal characteristics of the plate is quite useful in the high frequency range, as you can see here. In the high frequency range, the frequency response is quite flat. However, in the mid to low frequency range below one kilohertz, they have a lot of peaks and troughs as like this, which means that the sound quality is quite bad. If you use the piezo film, then or electrostatic excitation, then they are they are involved with very small amplitude excitation, so the efficiency is quite low, and uh, you need a large area for the sound radiation. If you increase the input, then you can slightly increase the, the output, but there will be a lot of distortion, especially harmonic distortion, will be incurred due to non-linearity of the system. When you use the, the, the piezo films, you can have a, a very lengthy response time due to, uh, you, if you do not use the piezo film, you can have a, a very lengthy response time due to small damping. So the clarity of the sound radiated from the system will be deteriorated. Well, this is uh, actually the response of the PGT film driver. And you can find it that P because PGT film is using the, the damping, so it is uh, a little bit damped compared to the upper figure. But anyway, you can see a lot of, of peak and troughs and the fluctuations of the spectrum of the sound radiation. So the sound heard by the speaker is not good in the viewpoint of the sound quality. So what 
negative features of the panel speaker are primary of concern. Well, let's uh, first think about the fundamental drawbacks of the panel speakers. Well, if you have a, a multimodal panel responses as like this, and if you have a, a such a, a excitation in the center, and if the wave is propagating to the boundary of the panel, then you can see a lot of old vibration mode is incurring in on the panel, and the, the cancellation is quite big. So sound radiation efficiency will be lowered, and the sound will be distorted. When you use the, the, the NXT flat panel speaker as like this, you can see that well the speaker is inside in the center, usually located in the center, and you need a, a cavity as like this. Well, in these days, the system should be a very, very compact. So in the central part, for you think about the mobile phone, the central part is occupied by the all the electronic chips. So there is no space at all. So this cannot be applied in the central part of the mobile phone system. So the cavity should be eliminated. When you think about uh, 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 a film vibration, then films can be attached as like this. But uh, well, because the, the film should be attached for a wider range of the area, then you need to have a, a very poor efficiency. And also the interaction between the, the vibration zones are inevitable. So they will be, they will worsen the sound radiation. When you use the, the conductive membrane in between the, the electrical conductive grid, then you can control, you can excite the film in a in phase. That was the, the advantage of such kind of system. But because it is involved with the electrical conductive grid, then you can collect a lot of dust from the environment and the conductive particles. So soon you will find it is attached with the dust and do not operate very well. You need some kind of very some enclosure system for the such kind of systems. So let's think about what should be done to improve the panel speaker. Well, first we mentioned about the multimodal panel response that causes the poor sound quality. So such kind of thing should be, the mode should be suppressed by controlling the transfer response by using some additional actuator. And uh, well, the cavity space for keeping the actuator was a problem. Then we can move the actuator array to the periphery of a plate. Although it needs a very small center cavity space, but uh, it can reduce the size a lot. And the third one was the, we need a large area for multiple zones for the panel speaker, conventional speaker, but uh, the large area can be changed by changing it to the multiple zones and the moving coil or the magnetostrictor actuator can be used as an actuator and you can form some virtual, virtual speaker system in the center. Because the high voltage conductive membrane collects the dust, we should not use the high voltage conductive membrane. Well, these four are the conditions for the new systems. So we are, I show the, the how to control the speaker system, but before doing the active control of the panel speaker, let's first introduce the dynamic characteristics of the plate. Well, everything is related with the bending wave. Well, if it is a section of a plate or a beam, then bending wave is moving as like this. Well, you can, if you can see a particle in here, the particle is moving in an elliptical way, elliptical movement course. Well, it is uh, moving up and down, and also it is moving in a rotating way. So rotational inertia is rotating, 
and the shear force will be made, will be incurred due to its motion. We are talking about very thin plate and the thickness should be less than about uh, uh, wavelength divided by six. And uh, if you talk about the point excitation, then the radius of the excitation, actual excitation is not point. It has an area and it's the area, radius of the area should be less than about 10% of the wavelength. Then we can just call it as a point excitation. Then you can write down the Gobern equation as like this. Well, you can see that, well, it is a, a scale of the nebula, which means that it's the first order in spatial differentiation. You can see that omega square is introduced, which means that it is a second order in time differentiation. This partial differential equation is a first order in space and the second order in time. And the right-hand side is the inhomogeneous excitation term for driving the speaker systems. Well, in a two-dimensional system, when we can, it is, can be sort of as a plate. And the one-dimensional system, we can think of this as a beam. B or D means the stiffness or of this panel or beam, where it is something like an elastic system. And the M prime or M dot prime is a mass density of the system. And the omega is the circular frequency or angular frequency of the system. V is the velocity of the normal vibration of this system. And the Fe is the external force, which is used by the point excitation at a point with a, a given as a delta function. X e comma y e position is the excitation position. Well, you can solve this problem. We, we call it as a biharmonic equation. And if you solve this biharmonic differential equation, then we can have a, a two solutions as like this. One form is a traveling wave solution, and the other one is a standing wave solution. Traveling wave solution is usually expressed as an exponential function, and it is propagating. And uh, if we propagate to the outside and uh, it put to the infinite domain, then it never returns back. Standing wave field is formed for the finite beam or finite plate. So if the wave is generated in the excitation point, then it, the wave will be reflected from the boundary condition and they will just superpose to each other. And finally, within some millisecond, they will form a vibration field which is called the standing wave pattern. So their expressions are very different. You can see the graphical representation of the traveling wave and the standing wave. In the traveling wave of the beam, then you can see that beam is traveling from the center to the outside without any reflections. But for standing wave, well, it looks like it is standing and it is vibrating up and down only. For the plane, for the plate, if there is an excitation in the center, then the waves, cylindrical wave is propagating to the outside and the neighbor returns back. And uh, for the standing wave field of the plate, then you can see that where vibration pattern is quite complicated and they are actually standing inside of the plate just moving up and down with some amplitude. So that they are different in their form. Well, these are showing the modal characteristics, the first mode, second mode, third mode, something like that, depending on the number of nodal plane, which is a zero amplitude. So we have a one zero amplitude line, two zero amplitude line, three, four amplitude line, as like this. So such kind of amplitude lines with zero amplitude are actually nodal lines. So depending on the occurrence, well, you can see that if you have a, you can, if you list the frequency, then if you increase the frequency, some resonance frequencies can be seen at corresponding to this frequency. So consequently, if you 
travel from low frequency to high frequency, we can meet many resonances as you travel to the high frequency range. Now let's briefly study about the fundamental principle of active control. Well, if you, well, even though we are doing the, the control of the, of the peaks and troughs by passive means, then it is not actually, it, it is not possible to eradicate the, the peaks and troughs, such kind of peaks and troughs completely. Well, some people can think that if you have a, a response function edge like this, we can suppress this peak and we can increase, amplify this peak in the initial sound and maybe we can have a flat spectrum. But that's also possible in some sense, but it is, has uh, some limit. Suppression of the peak is uh, rather easy, but increase of this trope is not very easy. It just uh, eats a lot of input power, and uh, then you have uh, no power to distribute the energy into high frequency range. And also, if you increase the input power indefinitely in here, then nonlinearity increases a lot, and you will deteriorate or screw up all the things in the high frequency range. Okay, so when we do want to control, then we have to place the actuator in the periphery of the panel and it will be excited. So the excitation is made in the periphery and we are absorbing the velocity over here. Then we want to radiate the sound in the, for example, omnidirectional way and the radiate the sound and the velocity should also have some, some relationships. Well, it is actually started from the inverse problem in vibroacoustics. Well, you can find the inverse problem in the noise control. And uh, if there is a noise source, irregular noise source, as like an engine, as like this, that they are actually irregular. And during the operation, they radiate a sound. And then we measure the sound in the outside and measure the sound pressure. Then the pressure is the consequence of the sound radiation. And the sound radiation is made by the vibration of the noise source. So if you measure the pressure in the outside, then if you inversely calculate it, we may calculate the velocity distribution of the source. This is the inverse relationship as like this. So PF is measured and the G is the transfer function and the plus means that it is pseudo inverse relationship then we can calculate the VS velocity distribution as like this. Well, similar concept used for sound field rendering. Now you are, so people are sitting here and the speaker array is radiating the sound as like this. We want to, to hear some kind of sound in here. They specify the sound field in here. That's called the rendered sound field or desired sound field. Because it is known as a desired sound field, then we want to calculate inversely to get the gain of the loudspeaker to form the rendered speaker system. In between them, there is a transfer function HT. So if you have a, a known data, then known data is given in here, target data. And uh, if you measure, the transfer function between them, then it can be substituted into here and uh, the amplitude or gain of the speaker system can be known. Well, this is an example. There is a, an irregular room and the loudspeaker is surrounding the hotspot area. What we desire is, well, because it is inside of an enclosure, when the sound is radiated in the inside of the enclosure, some reflections or echo patterns can be formed and uh, well, the sound field will be deteriorated due to the sound reflection. So we have a loudspeaker system and we do not want to have a reflection and uh, just looks like the sound is originated from this red spot and it is propagating without, as like without any wall in the free field. So this is the free field sound radiation condition. 
And this is the interest zone. And you can find it that sound is, looks like it is propagated from here. And you can hear the very natural sound. Well, this is possible by this inverse problem. Well, they are actually operating under the same principle and uh, such kind of, of methodology can be similarly used for the control of the speaker system. Now, let's think about, get back to the equation form. This is the structure of the common equation for the plate or beam, which is excited by a point. And uh, you can find the standing wave solution and the travel wave solution in here. For the modal solution or traveling wave, uh, uh, standing wave solution, we can use the modal control method, which is uh, abbreviated as MCM. And we can see the transfer function can be used, can be written as like this. If you inverse the transfer function and multiply with the uh, uh, predetermined velocity field with that, then we can calculate how much actuate the gain should be given for controlling such a mode. The second one is the using the traveling wave solution. And the inside of it, this is the Hunter function of the second kind. And you can see that it can be called as a control of traveling wave at abbreviation form, which is called as a TCM by the wave decomposition method. And uh, from the wave field, from the two wave solutions and two non-wave solutions, we can calculate the transfer function k. And uh, if you know the, if you specify the wave field amplitude, then multiplying with the inverse of the transfer function, you can obtain the actuator gain as like this. Well, at the moment we have a, a three method, but you can, Due to the uh, uh, time limitation, I'll skip this one. And uh, I, I hope you can see the equations were not uh, very difficult equations, but uh, if you have a question, then you can send an email to me. Okay, I'll just go to the... the application of such kind of control. Well, you can see the, the rear side of the OLED speaker with a 55 inch OLED speaker, uh, OLED TV. And uh, in the back side, they have a speaker system, which is actually down firing to, to the radiating to the, the downward. And uh, they have uh, only mid ranges and like this. They don't have any woofer system. So the sound, we, we can hear the the speech and the usual music. And it is okay for some neglecting such a sound quality, but due to the uh, limitation in the sound radiation of the low frequency range, their naturalness or their, they don't have any, any touching feeling to us. So we, are, we have a made, we have a try to have a, uh, to control the OLED panel, display panel, which is actually a glass, and uh, which we try to directly control the OLED glass, display glass, by using the actuators, which is located in the periphery of the glass. The first one is to make a single woofer system. It is a virtual speaker system as like this, and you can see that they are nearly in phase inside of the speaker system after control. The other method is to make two mid-range speakers as like a stereophonic speaker system. So you can see two speakers are made on the glass display panel. And the target range is the, the low frequency range, which it cannot be radiated by the built-in speaker. So the solid line is the built-in speaker radiation. And you can find that below about 250 Hertz, they don't radiate a sound at all. And also, if you think about a uh, uh, low frequency deficiency of the human perception, then we have a, a very dull ear in the low frequency range. So in order to compensate that, 
then with having a uh, same loudness, we should have a, a, a enforcement of the sound level in the low frequency range. We have used the ISO standard curve uh, of the, about uh, uh, the equal loudness control with the 40 phone systems. Well, if you hear the sound of the built-in speaker only, then I hope you can hear the sound. Okay, this is the, the built-in speaker only. I told you it is a downfire speakers, but if you use the built-in speaker plus one woofer and the two mid ranges, which is a virtual speaker added on, oh, sorry, then the sound will be like this. I hope you can hear the sound because it is related with the woofer system. So low frequency is, is uh, uh, amplified. And if your speaker system in the computer does not reproduce sound, then you cannot hear the, the difference. Another one is the, the other sound, which is actually the sports car acceleration sound. Sorry. Okay, but if you use the one woofer and the two mid ranges, which was controlled by the actuators, You can hear some rattling sound because uh, the vibration of the OLED panel was too much. So it just contacted with uh, some electrical circuit board. And also the, for the speaker system, the delay is very important. And we have checked that when we use the single roofer, it is about Delay is a 10 millisecond, and the, with the mid range speaker system is about a 13 millisecond, which is quite acceptable for the speaker systems. And the second example is the using the virtual woofer in a car, and uh, we have uh, installed the, the, the panel system in the roof panel above the rear seat, where it is a, a top view of the system. So this is the driver seat, co driver seat and the rear seat, and uh, just above their head, in the roof panel, we have installed a panel speaker system, and uh, it was, uh, its shape was like uh, this oval-shaped loudspeaker was designed, and uh, where the, the amplitude of the control field edge like this. So within this one, the face of the sound speaker system and the amplitude are very nearly uniform. And uh, well, the difference between the uh, face wind side of the hot zone is less than two degree, which is quite uh, uh, acceptable. And you can see that the sound pressure levels uh, distribution is quite small. And uh, well, well, we have tested it with a uh, uh, sound sample with the uh, 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 sound sample with the Aldo Shuprahatustura by Richard Strauss, and uh, you can hear the sound without panel speaker system and with uh, some built-in speaker of the car. And uh, with our uh, additional virtual speaker upper system. Mm. 
No? You can feel the, the difference. And the final example is the one-dimensional strip speaker. And it is actually now on the uh, application to the patent, US patent with the Samsung Electronics Company. And uh, we have uh, made a beam speaker as like this. And uh, because uh, we do not want to increase the, the price, then it is just confined with the three actuators as like this. The right-hand side system is using the TCM method and the left-hand side system is using the MCM method. And depending on the method, the position of the actuator are different. Well, the central, central main exciter is the same, but uh, control actuators are located in a different way. Well, you can see the, the measured vibration field as like this. And uh, well, this is the comparison of the measured driving point velocity at the primary actuator. For example, in the MCM model control method, its effective range is, uh, well, this is an aluminum case, effective range is below 1,300 hertz. So in here, you can see that the response function is nearly flat. And uh, beyond that, the response function still shows the trough and peaks. But if you apply the TCM technique, traveling wave control technique, then the response function becomes nearly flat for the aluminum beam and uh, even better for the acrylic beams. Well, below about 200 hertz was, uh, was not recommended because uh, the actuator itself has a resonance at one, nearly 100 hertz, and its effect will be affected until 250 or 270 hertz. Well, sound radiation is the final goal that we want to obtain, and we need a, a flat response of the sound radiation. You can see that comparing TCM and the MCM and the uncontrolled part, see the black curves of the uncontrolled speaker, which is excited only at the central point, but the blue and the red lines are controlled result, which is the same for the main actuator in the central actuation, but the control actuators in the sideways. And if you use the, the modal control method, then they are very nice for the effective upper frequency range, but after that, it cannot be used. But for the TCM, they have a very nice response function. And uh, this is quite a, a very important point for the actual radiation. We can see the test sample of the aluminum beam case. Well, this is the a primary actuator only case. And uh, if you use that by the TCM, so we can control the TCM, control the beam with the TCM and get a good uh, high fi sound radiation. But it is actually recorded by using the aluminum beam but uh, you can see that in the aluminum beam, the, for the TCM, they have uh, some trope in here at around one kilohertz. You can see that around one kilohertz, there is uh, some problem in here. But if you use the acrylic beam, then there is no such kind of thing. So the sound quality is even better. In terms of the total harmonic distortion in the high frequency range, you can see that well, the total harmonic distortion by using the TCM is very, very small. So it can be even neglected. Well, it is less than 0.3%. So it is quite a nice high quality sound. In the viewpoint of the directivity patterns, well, it, if the beam is located edge like this, and uh, well, this is the axial line, well, this is the axial line, and this is the transverse line, transverse line. 
then you can see that the TCM will have, a, by increasing the frequency, TCM has a, a nearly omnidirectional sound radiation. Well, MCM shows the beta directivity until its effective frequency, but in the higher frequency range, the, it becomes a very, very directional speaker in this way. So, well, for the, if you need some kind of omnidirectional sound radiation, this is the best situation. Without any control, you can find many peaks and the lobes, major lobes and the minor lobes and troughs. So, well, sound radiation is not very good. So finally, I just to tell you about the potential of such a panel speakers and the array speaker control. And we can find various application areas requiring auditory information transfer. For example, for the futuristic machines, well, we talk about the IoT, Internet of Things, and the human machine interaction, where well, the sound information, signal, sound signal is a very important information. And for even for the conventional devices, well, audio video devices and home appliances and vehicles and PA system, where everything can be a target. For example, the display panel edge like this can be used for the panel speaker. And uh, even for the refrigerator door can be used as a speaker system, which can interact with the housewife. And uh, for the car infotainment system, well, you can use the any plate as the car infotainment system. And uh, if you want to have a three-dimensional display panel, then you can see that, well, if you make a, a small sector of the OLED TV, then you can hear the sound, slapping sound very, very, very realistically. In the taxi or bus stop, we have a booth edge like this. And uh, this can be used for the speaker system, so without any blockage of such kind of views. And uh, for the uh, virtual field, then we can make a VR, AR system assisted by such kind of flat speaker system, when, which can be distributed anywhere in the room. So its potential is a lot, and uh, I hope some of you are very much interested in implementing such kind of things. Well, every presentation in here contains a lot of data and graphic materials of the, my former PhD students and uh, Dr. Cho, Dr. Wu, and Dr. Lee contributed a lot in the materials. Thank you very much for your attention. Well, that's it from me. <clears throat> Thank you, Professor Lee, for a very interesting lecture. <clears throat> Uh, we learn about speaker, panel speaker is very kind of characteristic. It's also application. Also, we see that control method that we just uh, you, you just show us uh, an active control and so forth. So it's very interesting lecture and uh, bring us to a broader knowledge in uh, being aware of the those kind of application. Yeah, in the in the in the in the field or in the engineering or in architecture or whatever. I think we face with many lectures. Now, uh, maybe for the audience also, they're interested in something that they want to ask you or to uh, make it clearer for them. So I, I want to give opportunity now, give the time for the audience to uh, bring us uh, some question that Professor E could uh, enlighten us with this uh, valuable knowledge yeah, in the panel speakers. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now it's the time for question and answers. Uh, I let everybody to uh, you know bring us your question either by chat or by raising hand. Okay. Thank you. Any question? Maybe Beta can help me also. It's a, if there are any chat or something. Okay, for participants, you can ask via chat or turn on. You are me? Oh, the first uh, question from yes. Terence Amadeus. Okay, okay, go okay. Ahead. Good, good, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Clarence, and uh, Professor Ich, allow me to ask uh, one question. 
Okay, so I would like to ask, uh, you mentioned before that uh, panel speaker can be used in uh, some uh, car application. The panel is uh, above the, what, the sitting chair yeah, in the roof of the car. Uh, what if the, the car, sometimes the, the roof of the car is uh, a little bit curved, not flat like this, a little bit curved, and there is maybe uh, some air conditioner also there. So uh, how can we uh, deal with that situation to make the panel speaker still uh, work? Okay. Because maybe it will uh, interference with the, with the propagation of the wave here. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for your question. Uh, actually, I have shown the one example of the application to the car infotainment system. But well, what I have shown you is the second generation. The first generation was implemented directly at the roof panel itself. So steel panel, which is curved, and with some reinforcement, it was used for the sound of speaker. And at the time, it was uh, good. And uh, the second one that I have shown in this view graph was about uh, attachment or, or additional panel, which is just fixed to the roof rail or something like that. So it can be used separately. So at any time, at any structure, you can use, you can implement the, the structure, but if you cannot use that structure, then think about uh, using the additional panel to be attached to there. Is that answer to you? Uh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Quite Thank answering. You Thank you very much. Thank you for your Thank answer. You okay. Thank you, Clarence, for your question. Any other question from audience? Oh, second question, bro. From Mr. Andrew. Andrew Joe. Okay. Okay. Please okay. Go ahead. Um, good. Good afternoon, Professor Ik, and good afternoon, uh, teachers and friends. My name is Andrew Jonathan, and uh, allow me to ask uh, one question. So, from the example of using the panel speaker, um, I just I just wondered uh, if I whether can apply this uh, panel speaker into a laptop or a laptop, uh, a laptop or not because nowadays people are looking for the laptop that has a good quality of display, a good quality of speaker. Is it possible to mount this technology on uh, some kind of devices such as laptop or mobile phone? Thank you okay. so much. Yeah. Actually, we uh, some years ago we also worked with uh, uh, at the first project with the Samsung Electronics Company, and at the time they have uh, they wanted to implement the flat panel speaker system to their mobile phone or or their uh, pad the pad systems. But at the time it was started with uh, some haptic sensations. So if you touch the the glass display with a finger, then that system should respond as a vibration. So a haptic sensation could be made. And we have developed that as a speaker system. Well, well that they have filed that as a, a, a patent and still they are not using that, but uh, well, they, many technologies are like that. They will use some time later but at the very time. Well, it, if you wanted to use the, the such kind of excitation system for the laptop computer, then laptop computer should have a very thin thickness. And uh, well, within the very thin thickness, you cannot put any actuator. The, the only actuator you can put is the PGT type actuator or film type actuator. And also the the laptop glass panel should not be on uh, ordinary LCD. It should be OLED type, okay? Well, the OLED type is possible and the, 
when you use the OLED type, then you can excite the panel in the in the rear side of the glass panel. You can you can vibrate the panel. The other way is to avoid the central excitation and use the periphery of the of the glass panel, as I mentioned. Then, if you use the periphery with a very small, tiny exciters, then you can use you can implement the te technology over there. The other some primitive type is to the to use the the add-on type of speaker system. If you have a uh, if you just use the the strip speaker as I mentioned, like this. If you have a, a strip speaker, sorry. If you have a such a, a small beam, then it is a very small beam. And it can be packed, packaged with some some nicely. Then it can be add on to the display, in the side way, something like that. Then you can generate a large sound. So two ways, for the OLED system, you can use that, and also add on type speaker system with such a, a strip type speaker. Did that answer to you? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor J Professor. Okay, thank you, Andrew, for your question. Anybody else, please? Somebody from the floor? You can raise your hand or you can also put in the chat. Okay, maybe I uh, I uh, I will have uh, one question, Professor E. Yeah. About the uh, the uh, presentation, yeah, you bring us uh, various kind of knowledge about the uh, speaker, yeah. And yeah. I just uh, remember you know, in the in the architectural acoustic or room acoustic, for example, one is facing some uh, sound field, the desired sound field. Of, of course, it depends on the on the application, whether it's a concert hall or whether it's a meeting room or whatever. Yeah? So they have a certain sound filter in that case. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, it's possible to uh, uh, bring some uh, configuration, mixing of the of this various kind of speaker, or it is just not efficient, but it's more efficient using the control method, the active control method? What do you think? What, what is the table? Really? One should think if uh, um, they face up a uh, need like that. Yeah, well, controlling the sound field with the speaker system is a little bit independent of the control of the speaker itself. So mm -hmm. if you if you can control the speaker system by using the active vibration control, then you can generate any directional response. For example, I just skipped the the one part. Uh, for example. There is uh, another method to uh, okay, no, not this one. For example, this one. This one is the the method to directly construct the, the radiation response. For example, there mm -hmm. is a plate, and we want to generate the directional response edge like this. And it is skewed, not in the central, in the symmetric one, it's asymmetric, for example. Then we just take its characteristic feature only and digitize it in the center, and this becomes a target pressure field or a rendered pressure field. Okay. And if you have a relationship between this target field and the uh, uh, vibration field by using the transfer function, then data and the, these, these points have uh, some transfer function relationships. So by solving the inverse problem with using the transfer function, then you can, you can radiate a sound edge like this. So this means that if you have uh, some database about the sound radiation pattern that you wanted to make, then we can change the gains and uh, those radiation patterns can be changed 
depending on the information you provide. Then, if you have a, a, an array of such kind of panels, then we can, we can separately control the panels with a different face information, then you can control the room field. Okay, so, so it is a twofold. Is that answer to your question? Yes, yes, thank you. Thank okay, you. Yeah. Thank you. So, you're talking about possibly controlling the source, controlling the room. Yeah? So that's right. Just, yeah. Source yeah. control first and the control the room. Yeah. But the inversely, room control information should be implemented in an inverse sense. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do you think the inverse solution is unique? No, it's actually not unique, but we are actually the, obtaining the best solution. As a least secure sense, okay. so in order to that, we have a, a you have to be very careful about the inverse process because we always has a, has involved with a, a singularity due to the involvement with the noise. Okay. Then some numerical techniques as like a regularization technique are needed, and uh, well, it is uh, very technical. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Somehow we ha we have to think about the optimization. That's right, that's right. Well, it is uh, also related to the optimization. Yeah, okay. Well, optimization of the bias error and the random error. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you, Professor Lee. Thank you. Well, it's a very, very valuable information what you present to us. Uh, I still have some time to uh, give opportunity for those who might have question for this lecture. Anybody else, please? Any question? Okay. Yes. Anything? Uh, no. Uh, well, I think that's enough. Maybe. No question. No question. Uh, excuse me. One question from me. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh. Professor E and uh, introduce your name, please. Student. student, my name is uh, Elbera Nathanael. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you for uh, the lecture, and I want to ask uh, one question: Is it possible, uh, for example, if uh, there is in a uh, in an auditorium or a movie cinema, something like that, there are two groups of people. Uh, for example, uh, one is uh, speaking or understanding English, and uh, the other group is understanding another language, for example, Korean, maybe. And then uh, you uh, is it possible with this technology to direct the sound of the movie uh, to the English speaker, the uh, English sound of the uh, dialogue, and the other group is uh, receiving the sound of the other language at the same time, at the same room? Mm -hmm. OK. okay. Uh, that's a good Thank question. You. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And, uh, uh, actually, it is related with uh, uh, sound field rendering problems in here. Well, uh, when I explained this technique, or the inverse technique, then I just told you that this is the this area is the field, the target field, which should be rendered. Well, render is something like we are just drawing the field or desired field or structure should be desired. And there is a one person speaking Korean only, and the other, there is another person speaking Indonesian only. And uh, we just uh, separate two sectors, English sector, uh, Korean sector, and the Indonesian sector. This is the information. So when you just give that information to the speaker system, and if you can relate this speaker, each speaker with each sector, then you can get the transfer function. 
And uh, by solving the inverse problem, you can get the amplitude gain. So you can give the, this information, two information together. And uh, if they are, they are coded differently, then you can project the Korean only in this area. And in this area, the Indonesian only. Well, similar example is that uh, this Korean does not hear any sound, for example. And this Indonesian wanted to hear some very natural sound. Then you can do that. Well, this becomes a quiet, quiet zone and this becomes the auditory full zone. So that's possible at the moment. So it is, uh, it is well, as Professor Sunako told, asked, well, it is about the field control, not the speaker control, okay? So in order to do that, also you can do the speaker control if you wanted to use that a panel speaker. Is that answer to your question? Uh, yes, thank you very much for the answer. Yeah. Thank you, Elvara, for your question. Anybody you. else? Any other question? Well, Hello, I think, uh, uh, yes. uh, you want to ask a question? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I have a second question. Actually, this is not about the lecture. I, I just want to ask uh, uh, if, uh, do you have any paper or any book or some material that I can, for example, read? Uh, read to understand more about this concept. Uh, yes, uh, actually, I have a, I have a written a book, and uh, well, Professor Nako, you have a, uh, you have shown the introduction on my resume, and uh, at the end of the resume, there is a, a, a title of that book. Okay, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so, if you so ask, I can get that online. Yeah, now. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, that, well, not everything, but well, well, these panel speakers are new things, actually, after writing the, writing the book, textbook. So it is not included in the textbook, but the basic theory and uh, the practice method is included in that book. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Clarence, you can get the books, I think. <laughs> Well, sorry, he writes a lot of books. <clears throat> okay, anybody else who question? Okay, if there is no question, I think uh, we have to close this uh, to end this lecture session. And uh, before that, I would appreciate Professor E for your excellent presentation and very interesting. I think it's rich of knowledge. Yeah? In, uh, you know, getting the getting to know about the speakers and also all the uh, parameters you know, surrounding it and also the acoustic. For those who are not studying acoustic, may taste a bit about the uh, behavior of the acoustic field and also the interference that they may have with the uh, loudspeaker, how to decide to design the sound fit, etc. Inverse problem, and uh, that's very invaluable information for us. Thank you very much, Professor E. We appreciate it and. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think now we come to the uh, end of this lecture, and I would like to turn this floor back to the uh, announcer, Ms. Petania. Please, Ms. Petania. Thank you very much. Terima kasih. <laughs> sama sama. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Prof. E as the lecturer, and Professor Benjamin Sonarko as the host for the knowledge which has been given to us.